We covered, Matt, the top five pistols of NRA. Mm -hmm. But there were a lot of rifles. Tons of rifles. I mean, it's gonna be hard to narrow it down to, to just five. To just five. I think we're gonna probably slip maybe an honorable mention of three in there. So anyway, let's talk about our top five rifles from NRA. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms. We've got Matt back with us. What's up everyone? And we just got back from the NRA annual meet. Yep. We did our top five first, pistols. First show. Yeah. Yeah, for your first show, yeah. yes. We did our uh, top five pistols that we saw at the NRA annual meet, which there were some pretty cool things. There's we a lot of cool things. Yes. And we told you guys to let us know down in the comment section below about some of your favorite things that you saw or that maybe we missed. It's a big show. You're gonna miss some things, yeah. right? Like, uh, 14 acres of guns and gear. That is literally what it says. I feel like I walked like at least four times that distance. Yeah, but. We did. But uh, anyway, so we're gonna roll on to the long gun side of things, which is pretty exciting. And for our number five pick, we decided to go with um, something kind of out of the ordinary. Yeah. Because uh, when you look at it from Shark Coast Tactical, they decided to go complete like custom, yeah. right? Just it, it, It's like a super cool, <laughs> Cerakote and design. Yeah. Um, yeah, like they just kind of knock it out of the park from an aesthetic point of view. Right, which is really neat. And it's all laser engraving. And from what they were telling me over there, every section that you see on there, mm -hmm. so like the Magwell, that's nine hours. Just above the trigger guard, another nine hours wow. of just laser engraving. So whenever you see how much that how is, much quantity they have on those guns, you're like, that's a ridiculous investiture of Yes. Of, yeah. Yeah, so we're happy that we carry those guys also, which is pretty cool, but at the same time, finally getting to meet them and then also seeing, like, I know these aren't rifles, but the Glocks that they had that yeah. were kind of like 1980s themed. I mean, everybody loved, like, the uh, Miami Days, Miami Day, I mean, Miami Nights of the uh, mechanics. Mm -hmm. And then you saw these Glocks, and I was like, dude, we even used them as a thumbnail in, in art, one of them. Almost Art Deco kind of. Yeah. Like, like, so, I don't know. But uh, yeah, the Viking rifle. The Viking rifle is the one that he initially showed me and said, look at this and all like, dude, the attention to, or just the level of detail that yes. goes into that engraving and everything is really, really cool. And it was just something completely different than what we've been seeing on the floor. Cause you they're so tired of black and brown guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was kind of cool to see all these different custom things. And they had all like a uh, tribute guns too, like like uh, World War II stuff. Mm -hmm. and just overall really neat things. Check out Shark Coast Tactical for our number five pick. Next up is, for our number four pick, the Stag Arms Pursuit. We didn't really see this coming. No, nope, uh, we knew, definitely not. Yeah, and so this was something that they released back at SHOT Show, but we finally got to take a little bit closer look at it this show at the mm -hmm. NRA annual meet. And uh, Kyle was over there, did his interview with Ryan, and well, they talked, well, first of all, they talked about their also, uh, what, the Project Spectrum? Project Spectrum, and talk about colors. Like, yeah, we were talking about colors We were talking about colors, yeah. and, those were really cool. Like they have 50 shades of FDE, of FDE 50 <laughs> shades of I've OD. always said about the scar. Then there's the 50 shades of OD, 50 shades of gray, whatever. whatever. But anyway, it's really cool. Uh, and on top of that, the Pursuit, three chambering. So you got six, six, uh, six, five Creedmoor, mm -hmm. six, five PRC, and then of course, seven, six, two, three, oh, eight. Uh, well, it also looks like it has a really fancy, nice twist fluted barrel, which mm -hmm. I like quite a bit. Another big thing I'm gonna be a huge fan of is the Trigger Tech Trigger. That's one of my favorite trigger companies. They make some fantastic stuff. And you can just customize the heck out of it. Uh, it had the yeah. Picatinny spigot mount, it had yeah. M-Lock on, uh, on the front hand guard. Mm -hmm. You actually had this weird takedown. On so I thought it was kind of cool because they've, them being an AR company, mm -hmm. and they make some phenomenal AR-10s, uh, they decided to integrate that same type of, you know, takedown. Yeah, capture pin. Yeah, thing. that same type of capture pin that you find in an AR-10 to actually remove the stock. Which is interesting. Like, I, you see so many takedown rifles where it's like the barrel detached from the action, yeah. and this was interesting because it's a takedown from the rear. Yes. Yeah, and so that allows you, from what from what they were saying, is it kind of customizes you for whatever your application might be. Hunting, competition, like you're doing, you're doing precision hunting, you want to, uh, pre sorry, precision shooting, you're doing a much different style of shooting than if you were gonna carry it in the field. Yeah. And you can modify it yourself to be able to fit those different uh, different needs. Right, and you know. Oh, and left-handed models. And left-handed models, models. So yeah. big fan of that. Yeah, of course you are. Uh, but I'm also kind of curious to see how this gun is gonna work and how that takedown pin, how durable that'll be, perhaps in our bulk gun series. Yeah, that might be interesting to check out. Yeah, because you know, I'm not easy on any of my equipment, so. He is a Marine. Break it or get a printout. Yes, let's move on to our number three. <laughs> so for our number three pick, not only when we went to uh, Henry did mm -hmm. they come out with a line of revolvers, right? 
but they also kind of brought something new to their traditional line of the uh, the brass guns, right. the, the golden boys, big boys, all that type of stuff, like this one. Hey! Which actually is the exact one I'm talking about, bam, because they've introduced now the side gate on their brass guns, which is pretty cool. That's something that they've been asking for for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And this right here is the 3030 model. Uh, no, I did not steal it from the booth. Uh, yes, you did. <laughs> Kevin, I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, this is a gorgeous gun. Tactically that, acquired. Tactically acquired is one way of putting it. I'm being kind and gentle to it, I, I promise, guys. But anyway, this is a phenomenal little gun, right? I've had the opportunity to shoot the 3030 model, and 3030 is such a funny round because you and I have had a conversation about it being like America's cartridge. Everybody's got a 3030, but to be completely honest, this was the first 3030 I ever shot, and I don't ever remember any of my friends, any of my dad's friends, or my dad having a 30-30. So I feel like there's, yeah, I feel like there's this uh, kind of mythos out there that like everybody's got a lever action in their closet and you know, this is just the most common kind of uh, hunting rifle that's out there. Um, yeah, I, I didn't know anyone who had a lever action 30-30 yeah. uh, until now. Oh, hey. But uh, I mean, I did get a chance to, to shoot it with Clint yeah. uh, and it, it's great. I, I have nothing bad to say no. about it. It's a super fun gun. Uh, I haven't had much experience with lever actions, and so it's there's just something kind of cool yeah. in the action of shooting a lever action. Oh yeah, dude. I mean it's kind of like running a manual transmission almost. You know what I yeah. mean? And and that's just awesome. So what's the difference between the, like this and a bolt gun? You know, I kind of look at this as slightly quicker than a bolt gun. Uh -huh. You know, I mean you can oh, definitely. There's two motions. There's actually four motions. Yeah, it's actually not. Yeah, not slightly. Depending if it's a straight pull, however. You well, know, there's, yeah, there's, yeah. There's, but there's straight pulls are technically not like. Bolt yeah, there's well, okay, there's another video there. But uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, these things are a lot of fun. They're 4570 models too and everything. I mean, I can run the hell out of those. Yeah. Uh, if you guys saw our footage at the Gundy's, Ryan and I did a little, uh, you know, three, two, one, go. And I grew up with lever guns. I know the actions. I know how far to draw and all that type of stuff. And you guys are probably going to be seeing a little bit more lever action content coming soon. So stay tuned for that. But for our number three pick, Mm, the Henry Sidegate Brass Boys. All right, so we stopped by the CZ booth, uh, CZ slash Colt, and one of the things they had I thought was really cool was their new Gen 3 Scorpion Evo rifle. Yes. So, you know, obviously people love the Scorpion Evo platform, mm -hmm. and they came out with the Gen 3 that has like the more AR style mag, uh, mm -hmm. and that had been previously only available in pistol formats. Right. Now you can get it as a rifle. Which is really, really cool because if you've ever shot a 9mm carbine before, gotta tell y'all, it's, oh, it's a lot of fun. I, I think people underestimate kind of uh, how fun it is to shoot a 9mm rifle. They think of it as, you know, it's that small pistol caliber. Yeah. Uh, you know, why would I need a, a rifle size fire? I'm shooting yeah. a pistol caliber. But it's just really fun. Yes, it is. And on top of that, uh, I have sh I actually have the Franklin Army binary trigger installed in my CZ Scorpion, right. and I run it full time suppressed. And I will tell you, with that direct blowback system, it <laughs> right, it is fun. But if you're aim just aim like if you're aiming at a still target, you want to hear like a bunch of ding 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 ding. ding. Get close first of all, and secondly, aim at the base. Uh, like. Warning, uh, not too close. Oh yeah, yeah, not like from here to the camera. Yeah. Which you guys probably don't know how far that actually is. Get like, follow your manufacturer's uh, recommended minimum safety distances. 15 yards should be fine. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. But, but what we're getting at is now if you install that same trigger in the rifle, you're gonna have more points of contact, a larger platform to run this with. And I think, hopefully we'll find out soon, will be a l even more enjoyable. Don't get me wrong, like I said, I love shooting my pistol. It's, it's the, the, fun. the low recoil and controllability of high a speed rifle. shooting yeah. uh, 9mm rifle is fantastic. Like, like you said, you can just make steel sing. It's it's hard to miss almost. Yeah. As long as you got like a little red dot on there sided in, it's it's super hard to miss. Right. So there you have it. Now before we roll into our number one pick, could go to throw an honorable mention out there. Matt, you got the chance to stop by our Friends again, Battle Arms Development. Battle Arms, yeah, man, that yep. was a great uh, interview. Uh, and they have their OIP, Ounces is Pain, rifle. This is funny. Super, super lightweight. So yeah. those guys are out there, they're making it happen. They had the really cool blaster pistol. Yeah. The Ounces is Pain, uh, they had it in a pistol, or actually it was an SBR, yeah. and a full-size rifle format. Uh, it was hard to tell the difference. They were both like four pounds. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Um, also, I saw kind of a sneak peek where they were looking at coming out with a trigger for an AK, and that was really cool. I feel like Battle Arms has done that. 
so like another one I, I mean they said it was a it was a new in development trigger so oh yeah so a little hint hint wink wink there yeah okay so guys keep a look out on that and without further ado let's talk about our number one pick so i got to see my buddy scott over at lwrci mm -hmm. and well that's my number one pick because not only did they come out now with actually a more cost-friendly DI mm -hmm. uh, model of their guns, sure. it's just non-ambidextrous, same same upper and everything else you get. Ooh, Not the gun I'm talking about. Non-ambidextrous. I, I know there is that, but if you wanted to get, own an LWRCI at a more affordable price point, you can do that option. Okay. That's not how you roll, though. I mean, save money and get get the ambi. Save um, money is not how Clint Morgan does anything. Save up the money to get the ambi, or disregard everything I just said and get what's my actual number one, which is the. A5 300 blackout pistol or short barreled rifle. That's why it's on my list for rifles. Right, right, there it is. right. See it, see it, see it. Is that the first time an NFA item's like number one? But anyway, hear me out though. Here's why it's my number one because everybody has been asking for the short stroke piston driven design of the A5 model, mm -hmm. which is great, yep. and a shorty boy chambered in 300 blackout. They did it right where FN did it in 5.56. Hmm. Hmm. FN, I love you guys, I'm just saying. But I understand the Scar 16's multi-caliber. Right. I'm waiting for that 300 blackout barrel. And for the NFA to go away. Support organizations like Unknowns of America. Shameless <laughs> plug. Anyway, so there you have it. The A5 300 blackout, small compact guy. I think he said, what, about a nine and a half, 10 and a half inch barrel? Mm -hmm. Perfect for 300 blackout to get that optimum type of velocity and everything that you want, or the type of ballistics that you want. Suppress that little goober, and now all of a sudden you've got like the perfect little setup right out of the box. I mean, except for the fact that 300 blackout is a you know meaningless caliber because it's just 760 by 39. Like, except that. I'm just gonna forget you said that. <laughs> Just, we're just not going to pay attention to that. Let us know down in the comment section how much you used to like Matt. Anyway, we'll leave it off there, guys. We hope you enjoyed our list today. And if you agree with it, let us know. If you disagree with it, let us know. And if you're as if big of a fan... If we forgot something, if, let us well, know. Well, we definitely probably forgot something. I mean, I did walk by the Rock Island auction booth, mm -hmm. and they had a, a double barrel four bore in there. And I was like, you know... Who needs a shoulder? Kentucky Ballistics, our friend just came out with a four bore yeah. uh, video. And uh, oh, oh, uh, and I'm sorry, my number one pick, because I, I differ from Clint, I'm sorry. My number one pick is uh, Krebs Customs' new AK, because of course it is. Mr. Krebs, I, I appreciate you, sir. Um, you just feel free to send one down here at any point that you'd like to. Um, I'd be happy to run that and say, I don't know, Kalash Bash next year. Yeah. Oh, by the way, um, if you want to see us uh, at more gun shows and specifically competitions, uh, and you would like to uh, sponsor any portion of that, uh, you know, feel free to send me whatever guns you would like me to test out or possibly use in that competition. I look forward to beating the crap out of this man next year at Clash Bash. You have no shame. <laughs> Yes, Mark Krebs makes some awesome stuff. I did get to interview him at Collage Bash last year, and yeah, Krebs Customs, their AKs are phenomenal. Didn't know you had a separate number one. I mean, because it's the right number one. What? <laughs> Listen, like there could be a differing of opinion, and then there's just subjective fact. And so, you know, you uh, have your number one, I have the right number one, but. Let us know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Who's number one do you agree with? This wasn't supposed to be a top five fight or a top one fight, but here we are. I think, you know, they're both piston driven guns. 300 blackouts, 760 by 39 are different. And one is far superior, far better to suppress. I will say this one probably takes it in the distance area by a little bit. I mean, you just have to get the right ammo. They make they make like, you know, 164 yeah. grain. 164. And more ergonomic AR controls, ambidextrous, you know, things like that. So there no, you have it. Maybe not, no, I'm just- not important. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. If Krebs is gonna send you that AK, I think LWRCI should send us that A5300 blackout. Anyway, guys, God bless. We appreciate you and your business, and um, see you next time at Classic Firearms. <laughs>